Now listen. Listen. I'm no I'm no Oliver Camp, alright? I'm not always putting up the most interesting sort of, you know, think piece type thoughts and tweets and stuff, right? You know, I mean I make observations, but I am not going to lie and say that I am always as capable of putting everything together, right? But sometimes when it hits me, I just gotta lay it out there. And boy, did I have some words. Like, I, I really had some shit to say to people today. Talk, it is a it is exactly it is exactly as I told people you know it, it's exactly as I said in that tweet if it's useful yep. do it if you take the time to sift through the trolling you know if you take the time to sift through the trolling you will find that there is indeed conversations that need to be had about a lot of this shit. You know, the people that voice the people that have been voicing their complaints in regards to a lot of the shit that's been going on in, you know, nerd culture spaces like comics, like gaming, like tabletop. The complaints are there because the people actually give a damn, right? People give a damn, not just about the quality of their hobbies <coughs> and of their products, but they give a damn about being able to find a place where, you know, a place where they can decompress, get away from all the bullshit of the everyday. You know, it's like a lot of these people keep going on about, you know, having their safe spaces, right? But then you start dragging a bunch of propaganda and socio-political zealotry. Now, I say socio-political zealotry. There is always room for socio-political conversation. But if you just got the outright zealotry and the propaganda and the bullshit, the rage baiting, people are gonna get tired of it really fast and the marginalized groups that are supposed to be conversed about and protected won't be. Because all they're going to think back to is the loudest, dumbest motherfuckers in the conversation. They're going to think back to the to the Brianna Woos. They're going to think back to the Anita Sarkeesians. They're going to think back to the Alyssa Mercantes. And then, when someone like me shows up, you know, A black, you know, a black male, and I'm, I'm going to just put this out there. I'm going to put my identity out there. A black male bisexual atheist. I step into the conversation, and I actually want to talk about, you know, some social political shit. And people are going to look at me pretty much on the same page as Al Sharpton, as a fucking race hustler, instead of someone that actually wants to have a serious talk. But everything that I just mentioned about my identity, when it comes to comics, when it comes to tabletop, 
when it comes to video gaming, especially shit like fighting games, it does not matter what I look like, what I identify as, or who I prefer to get in bed with. All that knowledge, all that matters is my knowledge and my skills. It's merit. It's merit, and it's the content of my character and the content of my actions that matter in any given conversation and that define who I am. And I make it a point to redefine myself and reestablish that definition as one of the most straightforward motherfuckers you will ever meet on any platform. And I do so simply by my actions. Because that's all that matters. That's all that should matter. But I say all that. I say all that really to say this. To repeat my tweet to repeat my tweet thread from earlier. You know? To Oh wait, hold on. I am a monster! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I had to. But to paraphrase my tweet thread from earlier, you know, to quote, to quote Exhibit in The Gambler, there's plenty of room for everybody, man. In gaming, in comics, in tabletop, in nerd spaces as a whole, there's plenty of room for everybody. No. I think I'll go ahead and let that, let that game me slide. Like, there's plenty of room for everybody. But when people complain about shit that's going on in stuff like gaming, in stuff like Star Wars, you know, when people get up in arms about how much of a joke gaming, the games media is, or how racist the games media and fucking Western AAA game development is, They make those complaints because they want to see the hobby reignite their reignite its golden era. All right, from the you know going through the nineties, nineties to like nineties to the early aughts to the twenty tens. <clears throat> I'd say up until twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. That was basically gaming's golden era. We had banger on top of banger. We had systems that we had systems that came in, left a mark, and were beloved. And all of that All of that is because there was creativity. There was a focus on merit. There was a focus on letting, letting games, letting the product speak for itself. And those of us that were, you know, those of us that have been here through it, When we say, hey, that's not a... It's like, hey, y'all might want to step away from that. Or, you know, maybe instead of... Maybe instead of browbeating people with your chosen political topic, why not try and weave it... But why not try and weave it into the narrative 
of your game. And I don't mean like what they're trying to do with fucking Dustborn. No. Pressure creates diamonds. Again. Don't browbeat people with the message that you want to spread. Right? If you want people to experience your message, give them a platform where they can do it on their own terms and see what you're talking about. Or, going back to games media. You know, don't don't look at something like Dragon's Crown and just say, oh, those character designs were... It's like, these, these are like character designs that were made by a horny teenage boy. Right? You, you do that kind of shit. You tear other people down when trying to make yourself look better. And all it does is get people to look at you and go, you know what? You're full of shit. Exactly. Don't go full Adam Sessler. Don't go full Jeff Keighley. Don't go full Jason Schreier. If people voice concerns about something that you're putting out, again, wait, you know, sift through the trolling. Take the time to actually sift through the trolling, and you are going to find that there is some conversation that can be had. Have that conversation. You know, consider customer service. Look at what people are talking about and go, oh, hmm. you know what? It's possible you may have a point. Because if there are two things, if there are two things that people do not like having fucked with, it's their money and their time. And if you are in the gaming industry, you are competing for both. You are competing for people's money, and you are competing for people's time. And if you are wasting their time with outrage bait, if you are wasting people's time by strawmanning their concerns about your product, If you are wasting people's time by trying to goad them into rallying behind in rallying behind your war cries and your dog whistles, wasting people's time by keeping them mad in order to take their money. Then to quote from my earlier tweet earlier, which was a which was me pulling a quote from the end of Doctor Strange. Eventually, the bill will come due. And it always comes due. Do not be shocked when the bill comes due. Textbook example, Concord. Textbook example, Dustborn. Dustborn may not have died out yet, but it's well on its way. Concord barely has the shelf life of a dozen eggs from the supermarket. If that. But when people actually looked at Concord and said, we see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to be Overwatch, but your character designs leave plenty to be desired. Your attempt at the gameplay leaves plenty to be desired. This obvious attempt at trying to shoehorn in socio-political bullshit, this obvious attempt 
at trying to play to the sensibilities of people that only want to see gamers mad instead of seeing gamers actually enjoying the product is apparent. And we want nothing to do with this. So what happens? Sales are so bad that GameStop is damn near trying to give away copies of Concord, and now, two weeks later, here we stand. The bill will always come due. And on the flip side of that coin, Andre, thank you for those examples. I'm going to use those. On the flip side of that coin, we have Astrobot. Say what you will about Sony, but the developers behind Astrobot, they saw a mascot. They saw something fun. They saw, you know, a collectathon platformer, the kind of game that people have been missing, and said, you know what? Let's put our mascot out there. Check out Astrobot. Look at all the cute shit Astrobot can do. And people jumped on it. Let's take a look at Croc, Legend of the Gobos, and Argonaut Software. Let's take a look at fucking Tomba getting a revival. Tomba! Let's look at Bomb Rush Cyberfuck. Let's look at Dave the Diver. Let's look at Cookie Cutter. All of these games from developers and studios that are coming out and saying, we want to make fun shit for people to play. We want people to love our games. So we are going to make games that we honestly, you know, we're going to make games that we look back and saw that people loved. We're going to revitalize games that we look back and saw people loved. Croc, Tomba, Dave the Diver, Bomb Rush Cyberfuck, Astrobot. People are jumping on these games because these games give it to them straight. No chaser. It's just fun. It's a breakaway from the everyday to just kick back, relax, help. Maybe even, you know, bring your younger siblings or your younger relatives or your kids along. Throw that shit in the console or pull that shit up on Steam and just go. Give people that chance to step away so that they can engage with you when they come back. That's why people go on gaming binges. That's why I take time to sometimes just, you know, not really be on social media. Not even, you know, not stream. Just go out, run errands, come back home, play a couple of games. Mind my own fucking business. And the types of games that I play are games that allow me to do just that. Like Warframe. Like the first Descendant, Monster Hunter, KOF, Street Fighter. Hell, JRPGs like Rogue Galaxy. Like, fucking, like what we were playing yesterday, Wild Arms 4, like Xenogears. That right there is, at least from what I can see, it's the crux of the argument. It is the focal point from which everything else, both good and bad, in regards to the discussion surrounding gaming as an industry and as a hobby, and the gatekeeping that was evidently necessary, that is the, that is the focal point from which it all stems. Oh, you mentioned games like Metal Gear Solid. You mentioned games like, say, uh, Spec Ops The Line. You know, these are games that very heavily tend to focus on a lot of, you know, 
topical shit for the day. But these games don't try to browbeat you into paying attention to it. These games don't try to, you know, they don't try to cast moral judgments or moral aspersions on the player. They don't try to make you feel bad for wanting to get away from that shit. They get your brain going. They get your brain think. They get your brain moving. They get you thinking. They get you going, hmm. This might actually be an interesting parallel to what's going on over here. This is allowing me to look at it from another from another focal point in the in the kaleidoscope. Example, exactly. <laughs> Example. <laughs> but okay. So Vamp likes what he likes. But like you said, he is still a slick son of a bitch that runs on water. Marisa in Street Fighter 6 is a fucking omnivore. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because when she steps in the ring and starts swinging them tree trunks she calls arms, she will light your shit up. And that's all that matters. She is a gladiator. She is written as such. She is portrayed as such. But Capcom doesn't try to browbeat people with what she does on her spare time. Or who she does on her spare time. You get what I'm saying? But again... It all comes back around to that same focal point. You try and drag unnecessary bullshit into the hobby just to get people pissed off and make money off of wasting their time using people's identity as a shield against criticism of your bullshit to line your pockets and fill your coffers with the anger, the outrage, and the wasted time of a consumer base that you want no parts of and have zero respect for. Eventually, the bill comes due. Always. And to those of us out there that might be watching this, the hobbyists, the enthusiasts, the gamers, the comic nerds, the, you know, the, the DMs and the tabletop gamers, listen to me. Listen to me, please. Listen closely. I'm not going to be the type to tell you, don't complain about what, don't complain about what's bothering you about your hobbies, about the shit that's being brought into them. I'm not going to be like certain people just saying, shut up and don't complain about what you hate. No, make your voices heard. But be, please, 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 be mindful. All right? Let, let, me, let me use this term, let me use this turn of phrase in the way that it's meant to be used. Always watch your six. Keep your neck on a swivel. Stay woke. Don't fall for the okie doke that these corporations are trying to play on you. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the rage bait that these hustlers, like all these fuckers in the professional, you know, the mainstream gaming media, are trying to play on. Keep yourselves in the loop. Stay informed. Make educated decisions, not just with your time and your energy, but with your money as well. 
And eventually, what you're going to do is you are going to see the wheat separated from the chaff. You are going to see publications like publications that ran with some of the most rancid shit like Game Informer. You're going to see those get shut down. You're going to see websites like Reset Era and Kotaku turned into laughing stocks before getting shut down. You are going to see games that tried to rage bait you. Games that tried to waste your time and your money even after you made all of those complaints saying this game could be better. Games like Concord. You're going to see those eventually fall by the wayside. And you're going to see the cream rise to the top. You're going to see more stuff that people loved, like Tomba, come back. You're going to see games like Cookie Cutter get, you know, further enhancements and, you know, you know, get revitalized. You're going to see games like Final Fantasy 16 get that extra support, the extra DLC to make it a more complete a more sumptuous and complete experience. Because what speaks just as loudly as one's concerns and one's complaints about a game, what speaks just as loudly is a person's hype about a game and where you spend your money. Which is why people always say two things. One, don't give money to people that hate you. And two, vote with your wallet. Because, once again, the bill always comes due. And the ones that make it are the ones that have earned your dollar so that way they can pay that bill when it comes due. Bingo. S and K listens to their fans. Magnum Studio, the developers of the first ascendant, they listen to their fans. Digital Extremes, the folks behind Warframe, they listen to their fans. They listen to their player base, and they expand on what works. Simple Keynesian economics. You give the people what you want, and you respect the people that buy your product, those people will continue to buy your product, thus funneling money into you, so that way you can pay your people, and you can create more of that product that people love. And show them that much more respect. Navigation and show them has that been much updated with new invasions. Chaos is spreading. Keynesian economics. The positive feedback loop. Damn, that was a lecture, wasn't it? <laughs> I am so sorry. I, I damn near used up this last half hour just going off. But look. Uh... Let's try and take a couple more minutes. Let's get in a couple more missions with, uh, oh, uh, Admiral Tarrington here. And then, uh, we'll take that midstream intermission, pop over to the first ascendant, and, uh, I will show y'all Ultimate Viesa, the Ice Queen Reborn. Let's have ourselves some fun, y'all. I am done. I'm, I'm through. If y'all... If y'all want to hear what I had to say about this again, then go back and just clip that last half hour. Because <laughs> I don't think I can repeat all that with that same kind of energy after this. <laughs> I'm just like, ugh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> now I'm just Ed Brain. <laughs>